Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll blink an LED. Once again, these videos are intended to be a companion to the enhanced mid-range PIC tutorials, the introductory lessons of which are available as free downloads from the Google Gun Electronics website. They go into more detail than is possible in the video lessons, so as always, it's best to download the tutorials, pause the videos whenever you want, and refer to the written lessons to fill in any gaps. In the first lesson, we just lit an LED. Now that sounds pretty simple, but it involves setting up the development environment, software and hardware, and learning how to use it, and learning a little about the enhanced mid-range pick architecture. In this lesson, we'll carry on from there, with the same setup and the same pick, the 12F1501. The hard part's over. It's easier from here. We'll use the same circuit as in the last lesson, where the LED is driven by the PIC's RA1 pin. To build this circuit with the PIC training board, simply insert the 12F1501 into the 12F socket, and close the jumper next to the LED labelled RA1. Every other jumper should be left open. Here's our LED lighting code from the last lesson. That's fine, but I really wanted to blink that LED, not just light it. Before we change the code, let's start a new project. There's no need to start again from scratch though. You'll often want to base a new project on something you've done before. It's pretty easy to do. Just right click on the project and select copy. Top in a new project name. And if you want, you can change the project location. I've already got a folder for it, so I'll go select it. The new project appears in the projects window, alongside the old one. But we won't be using the old project, so just right click it and close it. Don't delete it, just close it, so it doesn't appear in the projects window. You'll see that the source file still has the same name as before, but it's easily fixed. Just right click it, select rename, and type in the new name. Don't worry about the .c part, it's done for you automatically. If you now double click the new source file, you'll see a copy of the turn on LED code from before. Before adding any code to make the LED flash, I'll update the comments. We'll flash the LED once a second, and it'll be on for 50% of the time. Okay, just one more change to the wording, then we can take a look at the code. We're using the same pick as before, and it's configured the same way, so there's no need to change the configuration section. The LED is still connected to the RA1 pin, which still has to be configured as an output, so I can keep this initialization statement. One thing I will change though, is I'll set the initial value of the pin before configuring it as an output. That's better practice than what we did in the first lesson, where we set the output state after configuring the pin, because it means the output's never undefined. We won't get any glitches. There's nothing connected to the other pins, so I can just clear the whole port to zero, and the LED will be initially off. Now to blink the LED, we just have to set the RA1 pin high, then low, then high, then low, and so on forever. So I'll move the turn on LED statement into the main loop, and follow it with the statement that clears RA1, turning the LED off. Okay, that'll make the LED flash, but way too fast. We need to add some delays, and luckily, XC8 provides some delay functions. Actually, they're macros, but use them like functions. But before XC8 can generate the appropriate delay code, it has to know how fast the pick is running. The pick uses a clock signal, which is used to sequence its internal operations, such as fetching and executing instructions. On most picks, the clock signal can be supplied externally, or generated by a crystal oscillator, or it can be generated by an internal oscillator. The 12 f 1501 has a 16 MHz internal oscillator, which can be divided down to generate a range of clock frequencies, from 31.25 kHz right up to 16 MHz. So why the range of frequencies? Why not always just run at 16 MHz? Picks generally use less power. It might be able to run at a lower voltage, or lower speeds. The frequency is selected by the IRCF bits in the OSCON register. You can see that there are a few duplicates, and that 500 kHz is the default. The SCS bits select the clock source. If they're cleared to 0, 0, then whatever clock you selected in the processor configuration will be used. We previously selected the internal oscillator. But if bit 1 is set, the internal oscillator will be used, regardless of the processor configuration. So by default, the pick will be running at 500 kHz. But since our delays will depend on it running at that frequency, it's good practice to explicitly configure the oscillator instead of relying on the defaults, in case our code is moved to a different pick with a different default clock rate. So I'll add these lines to the initialization routine, using the bit fields defined in the header file. 
Since setting SCS1 to 1 ensures that the internal oscillator will be used, overriding the processor configuration, I could just remove this sign from the config section. But I won't, because it makes the configuration clearer. Now I can add this line to let XT8 know what the clock frequency is. By the way, XTAL is short for crystal, even though we're not using crystal oscillator, because in the old days, crystal oscillators were the usual way of clocking a pick. And that makes it possible to use XT8's millisecond delay macro, like this. Delay 500 milliseconds after turning the LED on, then another 500 milliseconds after turning it off, and the LED will blink at pretty much close to once a second. Okay, fine. But it's a bit clunky to repeat the code like this. So instead of turning the LED on and off, we can use a single statement to toggle it. Using the complement operator. That's a bit cleaner. When I build this new project, the LED flashes. In the next lesson, we'll move up to a slightly bigger pick and see how to read a push button switch and debounce it. See you then.